People think of bullet journaling and I think they think about some really artistic, very data heavy forms of journaling. Previously, when I thought about setting up a bullet journal, this was about seven, eight years ago, I thought it had to be artistic and ready for Pinterest so everybody else would copy it and feel inspired and it was beautiful. And actually, that defeats the point of bullet journaling a little bit, in my opinion. What most people fail to remember when it comes to bullet journaling is it doesn't need to be perfect. Bullet journaling is just for you. It's just for your eyes only, and it should help you to externalize some of the things you're keeping inside of you and help you process them and keep track of your life just a little bit. Bullet journaling has helped me massively but it didn't help me when I was trying to do it perfectly and using watercolours and washi tape and all sorts of different magical things. Now, all I use is a pencil, a pen, maybe two, a ruler, and that's it. Oh, and a rubber. Since I stopped putting pressure on myself to journal in a certain way, I cannot tell you how much it's helped me. It has helped me gather my thoughts and collect them in a nice, convenient little book. <laughs> this book. <laughs> world, meet journal, journal, meet world. I don't know why I'm doing this. This is completely unnecessary. Let's move on. <laughs> I'd really like to make this video to show you you don't have to make a perfect journal and it can help you even if it's the scruffiest thing you've ever created. I am somewhat a perfectionist and it's taken me a little while to get used to the fact that my bullet journal doesn't have to be perfect. But since I broke that habit and gotten out of that headspace and my journal is for everybody else but me, it's been one of my best coping strategies for anxiety, grief, mental health, anything, all of it. So I'd like to walk you through how I set up my imperfect bullet journal. Firstly, I get all of my really important equipment, like I said, pencil, pen, ruler, bullet journal, that's important. <laughs> and the first thing I do is I set goals for the month ahead. So this month it's August, happy August and I have set up a goals for August page. This is where I maybe look back at the previous month and see what I can improve upon or set some goals that I feel are important. These can be really vague, like I want to be more understanding, which I've had a few times in my bullet journal, or it can be something you can tick off and say, yep, I've done that. So I've got sell at least two art prints, and do Duolingo every day in August. These are things you can tick off and know categorically you've done, perfect, move on. Some other ones are a bit vague, like I said, I wanna be more understanding, I want to continue to eat better and drink more. These aren't something that you can really monitor as such, but they're really helpful to just keep you remembering throughout the month and I like putting them there just to have a little reminder for myself. The thing I think most people get a bit overwhelmed with when it comes to bullet journaling is the trackers. You've got a tracker for everything in some of these bullet journals, for sleep, for food, for exercise, for how many hours you've meditated, for how many times you sneezed in any given 24 hours. I don't know, there's a tracker for everything but that's unnecessary. Firstly, if you want trackers, you can get them on your phone or somewhere else that is handy. Your bullet journal should just be for tracking things that maybe you want to remember or how you're feeling in a day. That's why I have condensed my bullet journal into five main pages. The first page is my month in a glance. This is where I write down the month and then the week and what dates fall on what day, just so I can see it at a glance if I need to, a bit like a calendar. Then I have my remember section and my notes section. The remember section will be just things that I need to remember, obviously. So things like I need to pay this bill or I need to buy a birthday present for Hannah or things like that that I wanna make sure I don't forget. And then the notes section is just for me to scribble down things that I think about throughout the month. It's as simple as that. Then if we flick over the page, I set up a gratitude page. I do this simply by marking out boxes for each of the days and that gives me just a tiny little bit that I have to properly think about and have somewhere that I can just condense some gratitude. My gratitude page has been really helpful. I feel like I was dwelling on the negatives for quite a while and this helps me to start the day by 
sitting down and thinking about something I'm grateful for. Some days it's easy and it definitely gets easier over time, but some days it's still difficult. One day I might have loads that I'm grateful for and I don't have room. And then another day I might only be able to think of one or two. I think my gratitude page has helped me to really zoom in on days and start the day in a way in which I already feel grateful even before anything has happened yet. Moving on, another page is my highlight of the day. I like to have a page where I kind of sit down in an evening and look back at the day. I focus on the good in the day. Sometimes it's hard. If I've just been working or I've been in a particularly bad mood, coming up with a highlight of the day is difficult. But I've also learned to be able to write things down like I had a really nice cup of tea or I made lunch that was really great. I think doing this and jotting it down as I do means that I look back on the day and yeah, it might not have been the best day, but I still try and find some good in that day. Highlights of the day also really help when you're looking back at the end of the month because you can see a whole list of things that you loved about that month all on one page and I think that's really lovely and a brilliant thing to have. On a slightly different note, I also think it's important to track how you're feeling and I don't like this whole plotting on a graph how you're feeling and you can see it at a glance or whatever. I didn't get on with that so instead I have a today I felt page and this is an opportunity for me to scribble down at any point of the day but usually in the evening just how I felt I usually put things like today I feel content and relaxed or today I felt a bit wobbly and emotional but in control. I really like this page because it really helps me to keep track of the kind of things that I am feeling each day. I'm really loving seeing how I'm improving throughout the months and the days and the weeks. So I think keeping track of how you're feeling every day from a really honest point of view and writing down exactly how you feel it's really valuable and I'd really recommend doing it if you're starting off on a bullet journaling journey. <laughs> Finally, my last page is my brain dump page. This page is one of the harder pages I have, but it has probably been the most helpful. My brain dump page is an opportunity for me to write anything, anything at all that I think in the month. And it's a way for me to externalize some of the feelings I have without burdening a lot of people with irrational thoughts. Don't get me wrong, sometimes you need to talk to somebody about how you're feeling. You need to maybe say that they've upset you or you need to vocalize something that happened, but that isn't always the case. Sometimes we feel jealousy or we feel upset irrationally for no particular reason. And having a brain dump page has let me put it all out on paper, make sure it's out of my head and just into the world somewhere and it's been so valuable. I find that now instead of keeping it all up here, because there's a lot going on up here, I have somewhere to put it down on paper. I now don't stress people out when I have these odd thoughts every now and again because we all have them and I'm really glad to have somewhere that is just for that and I think that is a really valuable page to have. So even if journaling isn't your thing, maybe having a book where you can write down your brain dumps is an idea that you might wanna consider. One thing though that I found with having a brain dump page is at the end of every month when I was flicking back, the highlights of the day was fantastic to read, the gratitude days were great to read, the how I felt today was really interesting. And then I'd read the brain dumps and I'd either feel embarrassed about how I felt or I'd feel as though I needed to apologize for someone for thinking these things, even if I never even said it to them. So now instead, at the end of every month, I paint over them in the blackest paint I can find so I can't read them. I really like doing this because it kind of leaves those thoughts where they are. It doesn't let them go any further. It allows me to externalize them and leave them there. Again, like I said, sometimes things need to be verbalized and you do need to talk about them. But the things that you don't need to talk about, I think it's a really valuable thing to just paint over them and let them go. This has really helped me to be able to write down anything I think. The weirdest things, the cruelest things about myself and the nasty things my brain might think about a certain situation or me not being good enough. 
I feel like I can write down anything and I'll know that next month I get a big old paintbrush and I scribble over it all because they were just fleeting thoughts. I would recommend if you're gonna do a brain dump page to do this too, because you don't want a collection of negativity hanging over you. You don't wanna read it back. So just get a paintbrush and paint over it. You can even be creative with it if you want and paint something meaningful. I just really like attacking a page with black ink. It's great, it's a real release. <laughs> So as a roundup, at the beginning of the month, I like to have a goals page for the month. I like to have a month at a glance. I like to have my gratitude page, my today I felt page, my highlight of the day page, and my brain dump page. These don't have to be perfect. These are for you and you alone. They're to help you and to help you gather your thoughts together and to help you move on from things you might be clinging on to. For me, it helped me to understand that some thoughts are fleeting. Some thoughts we have in a moment, and they don't necessarily need to be vocalised, but writing them down really helps. It's helped me to realise that just because I'm having a bad day doesn't mean I'm having a bad week or a bad month. It's helped me to really record the good in my life. I think what people get wrong when they start bullet journaling is trying to get as much down as possible, and you don't need to do that. You don't need a tracker for every single thing in your life. You just need the things that are important. No, my bullet journal isn't perfect. It's scruffy, it's messy, it's got a lot going on, but so is my brain. So why can't it be a reflection of that a little bit? I'd really like to know down in the comments if you do journal and if it has helped you, or you might have some other coping strategies that might help someone else in this community. I'd really love to hear them and Thank you so much for listening. I hope you're all okay and I hope you're having a good day, morning, afternoon, evening, night time, you insomniac. And I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you then. Bye.